On behalf of the Kabangan family and the ALC Media Group, we give thanks to the Lord for allowing us to continue the story started 30 years ago by my father, the late ambassador and chairman emeritus of the ALC Group of Companies, Antonio L. Cabanguchua. It is the story of how a small magazine got built on the strength of an incomparable friendship between a man of business and a man of words. This is the story of how they both cherished literature and vowed to nurture excellent literary works in the pages of the magazine. Through the best of times and the worst of times, we continue this story. This is the story of the Philippines graphic.
sa dami ng taong nakalipas. Salamat dahil hindi nyo kami iniwan. Mula sa aming mga pangangailangan, hanggang sa daan patungo sa aming mga pangarap. Walang maliit o malaki, basta't sama-sama sa progreso. Dahil sa inyong tulong, mas naging maayos ang akala namin nakalimutan na. Basta't nariyan kayo, alam namin hindi mapapabayaan ang aming paghihirap. Para sa sarili, sa pamilya, sa kapwa, at sa bansa. Kaya ilang taon man ang lumipas, ano man ang mangyari. At saan man kami mapunta, kampante kami, basta't kasama kayo. What makes a nation grow? Every day we see them. The providers. The bringers. The traders. The movers. The risers. The doers. And the go-getters. the dreamers, and the inspirers. Each play their part, whether big or small, in creating a better life for all. Whichever your role may be, we're right here for you. We are Land Bank, and we are here to make this nation grow. Land Bank has always believed that in this country, we have to dream big. And so we learn to build something out of nothing. Turning good into better. Improving the quality of life for our people. And stretching our collective imagination as far as we can so that we can keep in step with the brave new world and make our big dreams come true. Sa paglipas ng panahon, ito ang hindi nagbabago. Ang layunin ng Land Bank na makatulong sa pag-unlad ng bayan, paglago ng ekonomiya, at pag-angat ng antas ng pamumuhay ng mga Pilipino. Sa loob ng halos anim na dekadang paglilingkod ng Land Bank, patuloy naming ginagampanan ng lumalawak na tungkulin. Ngayon, bilang pangunahing policy bank ng bansa, Tapat naming isinusulong ang mga pampinansal at pang-ekonomiyang programa ng pamahalaan. Isa ang land bank sa mga tagapagsulong ng kaunlaran at kaginhawaan ng pamumuhay ng mga Pilipino sa iba't ibang panig ng kapuluan. Pinatatag na ng panahon ng samahan ng land bank at ng mga lokal na pamahalaan. Kinikilala ng land bank ang kritikal na tungkulin ng mga ito sa pagunlad ng kanika nilang komunidad. Dahil sa kanilang tiwala, gayon din ang iba't ibang ahensya ng pamahalaan, naging pangunahing Government Depository Bank ang Land Bank. Ngunit bukod sa kanila, nariyan din ang depositors mula sa pribadong sektor na nagtitiwala sa Land Bank at naging bahagi na ng pagtupad ng ating misyon para sa bansa. Dahil sa pondong ipinagkakatiwala ng mga depositors at customers ng Land Bank, iba't ibang proyektong pampubliko at pang infrastruktura ang nabibigyang suporta nito. Ilan sa mga ito ang mga taan, ospital at pasilidad pang kalusugan, patubig, mga paaralan, pabahay at iba pang mga serbisyong pangkabuhayan. Sa pagtugo naman sa kahirapan, 
Land Bank ang nagsisilbing tagapaghatid ng mga tulong pinansyal ng pamahalaan sa mga sektor na nangangailangan. Kabilang dito ang mga programang Conditional Cash Transfer, Unconditional Cash Transfer, at Pantawid Pasada Program. Aktibo rin kabahagi ang Land Bank ng iba pang mga proyekto ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno na naglalayong mapabuti ang mga serbisyong pampubliko, pati na ang makalikom ng pondo para sa mga makabuluhang proyekto. Kasabay ng mga ito, walang humpay ang pagpapalawig ng Land Bank sa financial inclusion na isa ring prioridad ng gobyerno. Katuwang ang Land Bank ng Philippine Statistics Authority upang mabigyan ng unbanked registrants ng Philippine Identification System o PhilSys ng sarili nilang transaction accounts. Sa pamamagitan nito, mas dumarami na ang mga Pilipinong kalahok sa formal na sistema ng pagbabangko sa bansa. Samantala, kasabay ng aming pagtugon sa mas malawak na tungkulin sa bayan at sa mga programa ng pamahalaan, ay ang misyon ng Land Bank na maging tunay na kaagapay ng mga kliyenteng aming pinaglilingkuran. Sila ang ating mga magsasaka at mangingisda, kanilang mga kooperatiba at samahan, agrarian reform beneficiaries, maliliit na negosyante, at iba pa. Patuloy ang paglikha ng mga programang tugon sa kanilang mga pangangailangan, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Patuloy ang pag-alalay sa sektor ng agrikultura at panginista na siyang pangunahing mandato ng Land Bank. kami sa mga estratehiyang mas maglalapit sa amin sa kanila. Bukod sa pautang at tulong pinansyal, kaagapay ang Land Bank sa aspetong teknikal sa pamamagitan ng capacity building programs. Hanggang sa kasalukuyan, ang Land Bank ang may pinakamalawak na suportang pinansyal sa sektor ng agrikultura ng Pilipinas. At sa bawat pamaya ng aming natutulungan, may umuusbong na pag-asa, lakas at kakayahan sa mga bahaging ito ng ating lipunan. Nananatili mang tapat ang Land Bank sa mga tungkuling ito. Sinasabayan namin ito ng pagbabago. Sa pamamagitan ng teknolohiya, patuloy kami sa pagpapabuti ng mga serbisyong pampinansyal. Mula sa tradisyonal o brick-and-mortar banking hanggang sa mga makabago at digital na paraan ng pagbabango. paglikha namin ng paraan upang maabot ang kapwa Pilipino sa buong bansa at sa iba pang panig ng mundo. Kaya naman, nananatili ang Land Bank sa hanay ng mga nangungunang bangko sa bansa. Isa sa may pinakamalawak na operasyon, nariyan ang Land Bank sa anumang lalawigan sa Pilipinas. At sa ating patuloy na paglalakbay, magkasama tayo sa pangangarap at pagtahak sa hinaharap. Sama-sama tayong magtataguyod ng mas masaganang kinabukasan para sa lahat. Thank you.
Ito ang Land Bank. Naglilingkod sa bayan.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Philippines Graphics First webinar for this year. And today's the webinar's title today is Getting to Know the GCG. I am your host, Anne Ruth de la Cruz, the editor at large for the Philippines Graphic. This webinar is about getting to know the GCG or the Governance Commission for Government Owned or Controlled Corporations what their mandate is, and how do they make sure that GOCCs are accountable, transparent, and responsive to the Filipino people. Please allow me to introduce our distinguished panel of speakers. Our first guest is retired Justice Alex L. Quiros, the chairman of the C uh, GCG. Good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Especially to all the uh, viewers and everybody in our uh, website. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Next, we have GCG Commissioner Gideon D.V. Mortel. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Magandang umaga, Ruth. At sa lahat ng iyong milyong-milyong manonood at tagapakinig. Thank you, po. And to complete the lineup from GCG is Commissioner Geraldine Marie Berberabe Martinez. Good morning, ma'am. Nakamute. Nakamute po kayo, ma'am. Hi. Okay. Good morning, Miss Ruth. Good morning, po. Okay. And to all the viewers, magandang umaga po. Okay, good morning. And from the GOCCs, we are honored to have with us this morning, Mr. Elsie Pangilinan, the yeah, Senior Vice President for Strategy and Knowledge Management Group of Land Bank of the Philippines. Good morning, sir, Elsie. Good morning, Anne. And good morning po, uh, Justice uh, Quiroz and the commissioners of GCG. Okay, thank you so much. And good uh, and here is uh, Mr. Melquiades A. Robles, the general manager of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. Ay, sorry. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, uh, Justice Quiroz and uh, uh, Attorney Mortel and Attorney Martinez. Good morning. And uh, Anne Ruth, good morning. Yes. Good morning, sir. And then we have Ms. Diane Erica G. C. Jogno. Uh, the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation Chief of Staff will be standing in for now for Mr. Alejandro Tenko, the Chairman and CEO of the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation. Mr. Tenko, under, I was informed, will be joining us during the open forum. And good morning, Ms. Yes, Diane. Good morning, Ms. Andrew, Justice Quiroz, Honorable GCG Commissioners, and distinguished guests, and to all the viewers, good morning. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Diane. And we have here... Uh, two gentlemen from uh, the Development Bank of the Philippines. We have uh, Senior Vice President, uh, Mr. Ted Fernandez. Good morning, sir. And morning, we have Paul. Mr. Romeo B. Carandang, First Vice President and Head of the Provident Fund Department and OIC of the Human Resource Management Group of the Development Bank of the Philippines. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Justice. Uh, good morning Justice Commissioners. And... Uh, guests from uh, other GFIs and GOCCs. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, moms and sirs, for joining us this morning to discuss the GCG. Okay, before we start the webinar proper, let's watch this video about the GCG. The Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations was created under the GOCC Governance Act of 2011 as the Oversight Body for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations or GOCCs. The GCG plays a pivotal role in transforming GOCCs into tools for economic progress and development. 
It is mandated to actively exercise the state's ownership rights and ensure that the operations of GOCCs are transparent and responsive to the needs of the public. In line with this, it is the GCG's role to be stewards of the 118 GOCCs under RA number 10149. We must vigilantly monitor and evaluate GOCC performance, rationalize the GOCC sector through streamlining, reorganization, merger and upon evaluation, recommend the President of the Philippines the privatization or abolition of GOCCs, and shortlist candidates for appointment to the boards of directors based on the fit and proper rule, and set standards for compensation, incentives, and benefits. The Governance Commission's medium-term strategy under this administration is an anti-corruption and integrity program. As stewards of the sector, we aim to safeguard its 10 trillion pesos in total assets and prevent the dissipation and wastage of public funds arising from corruption. The GCG moves forward to become a mature, resilient, and future-ready organization. GCG Chairperson Retired Justice Alex L. Kiraz outlines the Governance Commission's mantra for the GOCCs under its scope aim great. G stands for good governance wherein governance culture is enriched, and best practices are championed in the GOCC sector. R is for right-sizing wherein stakeholder concerns are appropriately addressed by the GOCCs, and redundant positions are examined to avoid unnecessary expenses on the government's part. E for efficiency where GOCCs are encouraged to provide better service. A for accountability for all GOCCs to monitor and safeguard each corporation's assets through the anti-corruption and integrity program. Lastly, T is for transparency wherein a digitalized integrated corporate reporting system is utilized for the easy analysis of the financial state, viability, and fiscal discipline of all GOCCs to gain public trust. Okay, to tell us more about GCG, here is someone who has been working in government since 1985. His first job in government was a special counsel at the Office of the City Fiscal of Manila. He also worked at the House of Representatives, Office of the Solicitor General, and served as a Metropolitan Trial Court Judge and a Regional Trial Court Judge. Prior to his present appointment, he served as an Associate Justice of the Sandigan Bayan. Here is retired Justice Alex L. Quiros, the GCG chairman. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning again to everybody. You may proceed, sir, with your uh, no, with your presentation. I would like, uh, since uh, we have been uh, uh, viewed by the, the public, first, I would like to distinguish the identity of these three offices. Number one is GCG. Number two is GOCC. Number three is OGCC. Some people have interchangeably used this and being confused. Mm -hmm. GCG is our office, the Commission for Good Governance of the four GOCCs. While <clears throat> GOCC is a government uh, own and controlled corporation. And uh, OGCC is the one who handles the legal affairs of all GOCCs and sometimes with the help of OSG. So these uh, three uh, terms or offices are different from each other, but the public must be aware of its differences. At present, the GCG is a uh, Central Advisory Monitoring and Oversight Body that formulates, implements, and coordinates policies to govern government-owned and controlled corporation or GOCCs. Actually, we have also uh, signed the Joint uh, Memorandum Circular to harmonize okay, the client satisfaction me measurement. It was uh, signed by GCG and Arta, so as to uh, uh, so as to have satisfaction of customer 
and uh, the GOCC will uh, will always serve the people well, not only serving them, but to serve the public well. That is uh, one of the basic purpose of entering into that uh, joint memorandum, as well as to save some budget in so far as the survey is concerned, because we have adopted the uh, survey being conducted by the ARTA, so as the same be used by the respective GOCCs. And uh, I would like also to uh, uh, add the uh, launching of the anti-corruption and integrity program you know, to uh, APAC region. These are, uh, these are the reason okay, uh, why we have uh, launched anti-corruption so as to guard the, uh, to guard the uh, almost 11 trillion assets of the government corporations as well as to avoid dissipation of these public funds. And of course, to serve efficiently as a whole, the Filipino people. Next is uh, uh, in connection with the uh, with our mantra. Okay, this was inspired by the uh, pronouncement by our president. That's why we come up with this mantra: good governance, right sizing, efficiency, accountability and transparency. Those are inspired by our president to come up with the transparency, adapting as even mandated by the law of ICRS, Integrated Corporate Reporting System, and to have a real-time monitoring and transparency of all the activities of the GOCC. Well, uh for now uh i will uh, shorten my uh my uh, intro in so far as the gcg and i'll give uh, my two commissioners to say or to deliver that their thoughts okay thank you so much uh chairman kiros for that very informative talk about uh, GCG. Let's move on to our second speaker. Our second speaker was a trial lawyer handling various types of cases and was into legal consultancy, both uh, from the public and private sectors. He is also a professor of law in various colleges of law and graduate schools of law and teaches subjects like constitutional law, remedial law, administrative law, and other civil law subjects. Here is GCG Commissioner Gideon Martel, who will talk about the relationship of GCG with GOCCs. Good morning, sir. Uh, Ruth? Yes, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Are you sure that that is the topic that I will be uh, going to uh, discuss? Well, I think that is for uh, Commissioner uh, GCG sir. Berabe. Okay, so you, uh, what will you be talking about, sir? You can go ahead for with your presentation. Yeah, I can proceed with my uh, piece now as um, as uh, assigned. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, GCG, if you can hear me clearly. Yes, okay, sir. GCG go under ahead. RA 10149 is um, mandated uh, by the law Hello, to protect the... Uh, Ayun. Ito yung slides what? mo, sir, no? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, if I can proceed. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, uh, GCG, uh, given the mandate of RA10149, is um, given the task to actually protect the uh, state-owned interest. As mentioned by the chairman, it's mm -hmm. almost 11 trillion uh, resources already. And to protect this, there has to be some institutional measures that the GCG must uh, uh, perform. And we have what we call the performance evaluation system and the corporate governance scorecard, okay? 
uh, for purposes of this discussion, I will be talking what we call the Performance Target Conference. Okay, this is one of the um, tool as mentioned in the performance evaluation system that the GCG is utilizing. Uh, the performance target uh, conference um, are annual high level meetings between the CEO of a GOCC and the governance commission for the setting of the final performance targets of the GOCC. Performance target conference aim to help GOCCs improve performance by assessing whether they achieve the targets set for the previous year, providing an opportunity as well to establish new baselines and targets. The GCG and GOCCs use an established performance evaluation system to monitor the yearly performance results of GOCCs. The GCG has established guidelines for the system. As you can see in the uh, screen, Okay, we have what we call the performance evaluation system under our memorandum circular number 2023-01. If you are familiar with Kaplan and Northern, this is a balanced scorecard approach, no? wherein the GCG measure GOCCs in terms of social impact, financials, customers and stakeholders, internal process, and uh, learning growth. The performance evaluation system provides a performance scorecard that GOCCs use to translate their strategic objectives into critical success indicators. A performance scorecard contains metrics such as baseline data and targets that help measure the progress and guide the decision making of a GOCC towards its vision. Performance scorecards are prepared by the GOCCs and then reviewed and approved by the GCG. The GCG may increase targets as necessary to push GOCCs to achieve breakthrough results and support national development policies and programs. The um, targets of the GOCCs must be aligned with the uh, what you, we call Philippine Development Plan and it must also cater toward the attainment of the socio-economic agenda of the uh, present dispensation. The performance scorecards uh, at the moment uh, has been completed uh, by the uh, GCG and uh, uh, we are uh, uh, this coming uh, quarter, uh, we have finalized all the performance target conferences. These uh, twin institutional tools, the performance evaluation system and the corporate governance scorecard are our um, mechanism to push the, G the GOCCs to perform their mandates at its fullest. Thank you very much, Ruth. And um, yeah. that will be as far as our um, institutional tool that will help a GOCCs perform at its best. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mortel. Okay, our third speaker worked in various positions in the private and public sector. She was a consultant for international contracts for Euromed Laboratories. She served as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Government Service Insurance System and Chief Legal Counsel of the Office of Senator Lauren Legarda. She also once served as Provincial Board Member of the Provincial Board of Batangas. Here is Commissioner Geraldine Marie Berberabe Martinez. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. Uh, Ruth, can you hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear, Paul. Okay. So I will be uh, talking about the relationship of the GCG with the different GOCCs. As was mentioned earlier by the good chairman and the commissioner, uh, we are a regulatory body which performs advisory, monitoring, and oversight to the 118 GOCCs we have. Now, under the leadership of uh, the Chairman uh, Justice Alex Quiroz, the GCG has promoted openness and collaboration between the GCG and the GOCCs. The goal is to increase awareness and facilitate better understanding of policies that impact the operations and viability of GOCCs. 
uh, as you mentioned earlier, I was a member of the Board of Trustees of uh, GSIS in 2010. And uh, the GCG was created in 2011. Uh, prior to that, I was all. I also worked in two other GOCCs prior to 2011, and I saw the difference between mm. having no GCG and the uh, emergence of uh, the GCG and its policies. Mm -hmm. I can say that the GCG has consistently encouraged open communication and dialogue with GOCCs to address various concerns, including, for instance, the CPCS or the Compensation and Position Classification System. The CPCS is among the matters frequently discussed by the GCG with the GOCCs. It is a mechanism mandated by RA 1149 to promote a standardized compensation package and index of occupational services for GOCC officers and employees. In 2021, EO 150 was issued, providing a new framework for the CPCS and index of occupational services, position titles, and job grades for GOCCs. It needs to be emphasized that the goal of the CPCS is to develop a competitive compensation and remuneration system that will attract and retain talent while allowing GOCCs to remain financially sound and sustainable. CPCS also seeks to eliminate any excessive, unauthorized, illegal or unconscionable allowances, benefits and incentives through a rationalization policies. The GECG has recently also collaborated, as uh, was mentioned by the chairman, with the Anti-Red Tape Authority or the ARTA to provide their GOCCs with supplemental guidelines on the implementation of a harmonized framework for client satisfaction measurement among GOCCs. GCG and ARTA issued a joint memorandum circular on this matter last April 12, 2023. Pursuant to the, this uh, joint uh, memorandum circular, all GOCCs are mandated to maintain a customer satisfaction survey mechanism to enable direct citizen participation in the performance of the GOCCs. Under the GCG ARTA joint memorandum circular, at least 80% of the customers of a specific GOCC must be satisfied with its services. Otherwise, it automatically must be, uh, it automatically receives a zero score for this performance indicator. Moreover, this uh, joint memorandum circular seeks to reduce the cost and burden of compliance of GOCCs with client satisfaction measurement and client satisfaction survey requirements. This is GCG's way of helping and pushing our GOCCs to continue improving and enhancing their services. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Martinez, for that presentation. Now that we have heard what GCG does, it's time to see how the various GOCCs achieve the goals that they that uh, that were set together with the GCG. Okay, our first speaker has been with the Land Bank of the Philippines for 12 years and currently serves as the head of the bank's strategy and knowledge management group, uh, which leads in, the str in strategic initiatives. His passion as a development professional includes both service and government. Uh, in the Department of Education and the Office of the President's Presidential Management Staff and international organizations like the United States Agency for International Development, Millennium Challenge Account Philippines, and the United Nations Development Program. He has also shared his expertise as a faculty member of various academic institutions, including the De La Salle System, the Ateneo de Manila University, and University of Asia and the Pacific, among others. 
Here is Mr. El Cid C. Pangilinan, the SVP for Strategy and Knowledge Management Group of the Land Bank of the Philippines. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Anne, once again, and uh, to our partners from the Governance Commission for GOCCs, led, of course, by our Chairman, Justice Alex Quiroz, and the Commissioner, uh, Attorney Gideon Mortel, and uh, Commissioner Gigi Berberabe Martinez. And to my fellow panelists, event organizers, development partners, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm greetings to all of you. On behalf of the President and CEO, uh, Cecilia Cayosa Barromeo, I am honored to represent the Land Bank of the Philippines at this webinar and share with you our roles and initiatives in serving the nation. Land Bank is the largest government financial institution in the country. It strikes the balance in fulfilling the mandate of promoting inclusive and sustainable development. We are your partner in nation building from providing reliable banking services and financial interventions to accelerating financial inclusion, supporting vulnerable sectors, re revitalizing local economies, and pursuing initiatives in support of the national government's inclusive development agenda. We also have subsidiaries that are engaged in related services, which include the Overseas Filipino Bank or OF Bank. This is the very first digital bank in the country that services Filipinos across the globe. In December 2022, we launched the bank's new medium-term plan 2023 to 2028 with a new vision and mission statement that better reflect the bank's commitment to fulfilling its expanded mandate of serving the nation for the next six years and aligned with the eight-point agenda of the national government. This focuses on financial inclusion, digital transformation, and sustainable development. Serving the nation is our new brand promise moving forward as we stand ready to work with you and other partners in accelerating inclusive growth and supporting vulnerable sectors. All 1,717 LGUs in the country maintain land bank deposit accounts, while majority of national government agencies and fellow GOCCs have land bank as their major depository bank. We serve as the main distribution arm of the national government's social protection programs. For one, we facilitate the cash grant payouts to the 9.9 .9 million beneficiaries of the country's conditional and unconditional cash transfer programs. Leveraging on technology, we extend various services to meet the financial requirements of public and private partners. We likewise provide training interventions for the capacity building of partner cooperatives. Let me share with you some highlights of the recent accomplishment to fortify land banks' viability and capacity to serve our growing publics. Land Bank recorded a net income of 10.8 billion in the first quarter of the year. This is buoyed by higher interest income and lower operating costs. This is 2 billion higher than target and represents 30.8% of the bank's 35 billion income target by year end. The bank's assets and capital both expanded year on year while financial ratios likewise remain at very healthy levels. Land Bank is the biggest credit provider to the agricultural sector, reaching all components of the agri value chain. As of March 31, 2023, outstanding loans to the agri sector reached 271.8 billion for a 14.8% year on year growth. A total of 42.3 billion of these loans directly benefited small farmers and fishers, including those which were channeled through cooperatives and farmers associations, rural financial institutions, and other conduits. Land Bank is the only bank present in all 82 provinces of the country, providing accessible products and services, including underserved and remote communities. Our touch points are composed of 607 branches and branch light units, 58 <clears throat> lending centers, 2,906 ATMs, 224 CDMs, and 1,751 agent banking partner POS cash out terminals. Clients may also access 2,391 ATMs, 
located in 7-Eleven stores nationwide. Land Bank also posted a 30% growth in value amounting to $735.95 billion for its major digital banking platforms in the first quarter of 2023. The continued increase was facilitated, of course, by a total of 41.2 million transactions via our major platforms as uh, our Land Bank mobile banking app, We Access, Electronic Modified Disbursement System, the LinkBiz portal, iAccess, and the Land Bank bulk crediting system. As mentioned, the GCG has always been a valued partner of Land Bank in support of our transformation as a development institution as we continue to evolve to better serve our diverse clientele. As mentioned by our commissioners, the performance evaluation system of GCG would guide us to properly develop our expanded mandate and goals, and more importantly, how to achieve them in order to deliver excellent public service. As an effective governance and management tool, the PES has helped the bank ensure that its commitment to transparency, accountability, financial viability, and service excellence are all well fleshed out and integrated in all aspects of our operation. The GCG has likewise helped us institutionalize corporate performance, transparency, accountability, financial viability, and responsiveness through the bank's core values of integrity, citizen centricity, proactive service, collaboration, and social responsibility. Ensuring high corporate performance is ingrained in the bank's planning, monitoring, and reporting processes, wherein objectives and targets are matched with applicable measures and realistic targets. The Land Bank Board is also a price of all of our performance on a monthly basis. Land Bank has consistently garnered high ratings on its performance scorecard and on the corporate governance scorecard among the GOCCs over the years. This is a clear demonstration of our steadfast commitment to the highest standards of excellence in public service. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I was able to impart a clear picture of the various roles and contributions of Land Bank in support of the country's development agenda. We will be celebrating our 60th anniversary in August this year. This represents six meaningful decades of service to the nation. And we remain committed to actively work with all of you, especially the GCG, as we collaborate in pursuit of development that is shared, inclusive, and sustainable. Maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you so much, Sir Ilseed, for that presentation. Um, our next speaker was supposed to be uh, Mr. Melquiades A. Robles, the General Manager of uh, the Philippine Charity Sweep 6 office. Unfortunately, he had to rush to a very important meeting. And presenting in his behalf is Attorney Lisa Grace Pagano who is uh, the General Manager's Chief of Staff. Are you there na, Attorney Lisa? There you are. Good morning. Good morning, Attorney Lisa. Hi, good morning po, Ma'am Ruth. Uh, yes, Commissioner Quiroz, uh, Commissioner uh, Mortel, sorry, uh, Chairman Quiroz, Commissioner Mortel, and Commissioner Belverable Martinez. Good morning po. Slides. One moment, ma'am. There we are. Go ahead, Mom. You can start with the presentation. Yes. Um, good morning. Uh, thank you for this opportunity for us to introduce the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, our vision, our organization, our operations, especially as far as 
our charity programs, and our assistance to beneficiaries. So as uh, you can see in our slide, we were created, the charter of PCSO uh, was, um, is, uh, was passed in uh, June 18, 1954 under President Ramon Magsaysay. This is Republic Act number 1169. Next slide, please. By 2028, PCSO envisions itself to be an excellent government agency generating sustainable funds for charity programs through responsible gaming. Our mission, of course, is for us to be able to achieve uh, transparency in all our gaming activities as well as to help uh, to help the PC, to, uh, to help individuals who need our assistance. Our slogan right now is PCSO Hindi Umuuro sa Pagtulong. Based on our charter, the revenue allocation is from the uh, gross receipts, we, re we deduct 2% as printing costs, and the net receipts are distributed into three funds. First is the price fund, which it comprises 55% of our net receipts. And this is used to pay prices to holders and sellers of winning tickets. Unclaimed prices for a year are now transfer, are transferred to the charity fund. The charity fund is 30% of net receipts, and these are used for our health programs, medical assistance and services, as well as charities of national character. Included here is our contribution to the universal health care. Uh, the remaining 15% of the net, uh, the remaining of uh, the remaining balance from our net receipts, which is 15% goes to our operating fund. The operating fund, of course, would, uh, would fund or yes, would fund our day-to-day -day operations and our maintenance and capital expenditures. Again, at the end of the year, any excess in our operating fund would go to the charity fund. So uh, this slide would show to you our gaming products. So um, just as a matter of, uh, just for the, influ uh, for the information of the body, we, uh, in 1995, the PCSO launched the very first online lottery known as Lotto. And the first draw was done on March 8, 1995. So we have set, uh, over the years, we have developed uh, several gaming products. You have your Ultra Lotto 658, the Grand Lotto 655, the Super Lotto 649, the Mega Lotto 645, and the, the uh, Lotto 642, which is the part of our national lottery games. We also have our 6D Lotto, 4D Lotto, 3D Lotto, and 2D Lotto. Under our small town lottery, we have the STL Pares, and we have the Sweb 2 and the Sweb 3. And of course, uh, a lot of you probably are aware of the Scratch games. So those are our gaming products. As mentioned earlier, our, our uh, net receipts are distributed, 30% uh, uh, goes to charity, and so we have the Institutional Partnership Program where we fund uh, accredited institutions that provide charity and health services. We also have our Calamity Assistance Program, our Medical Mission Program, Medicines Donation Program. Uh, one of our very uh, popular programs is our medical transport vehicle or PPV donation program. So we donate uh, patient transport vehicles to LGUs and other institutions. And of course, we have our universal health care and mandatory contributions. Aside from this, we have, of course, our medical access program and our, our contributions to the Malasakit Center. This slide would show you our revenue for tw from 2020 to 2022. So in 2020, we had a total revenue of 
uh, 18.6, roughly 18.6 billion. In 2021, we had a uh, total revenue of 43.3 billion. And in 2022, when GM Robles uh, assumed office as general manager, we had a record-breaking revenue of 57.4 uh, billion. In terms of the utilization of our funds, our assistance, our total assistance uh, reached 12.1 billion for the period of 2020 to 2022. In 2022 alone, I would like to emphasize that we had a 109% growth. Our ass medical assistance and other programs reached 2.8 billion. Mandatory contributions to government reached 3.4 billion for a total of 6.2 billion. The, the our contributions to the national government for 2020 to 2022 reached 39.8 billion. Specifically for the year of uh, 2022, we, uh, we we were able to give a total of 18.8 billion. So we contributed 7.2 billion in taxes and 1.5 billion in dividends. So that ends my presentation, Ma'am Ruth, uh, Honorable Members of the GCG. Maraming salamat po. PCSO, hindi mo umuurong sa pagtulong. Thank you so much, Attorney Lisa. And now, our next speaker will be pitching in for uh, the Chairman and CEO of the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation. Here is the PAGCOR Chief of Staff, Ms. Diane Erika G. C. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning to all the viewers. On behalf of our chairman and chief executive officer, Alejandro Tenko, who is to join us later today, allow me to present to you the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PANCOR, is a 100% government-owned and controlled corporation under the office of the President. The PANCOR was created by virtue of Presidential Decree Numbers 1067-A, issued by then-President Ferdinand Marcos, and this was in response to calls for the Philippine government to put a stop to the proliferation of illegal casino operations in various parts of the country. The law creating PAGCOR was later amended, and this was consolidated under Presidential Decree No. 1863, otherwise known as our PAGCOR Charter. Under our charter, PAGCOR was given a three-pronged mandate. First is on regulation, to regulate, operate, authorize, and license games of chance, cards, and numbers, particularly casino gaming in the Philippines. Second is on revenue generation to generate revenues for the Philippine government's social, civic, and national development programs. And third is the promotion of the Philippine tourism industry. Next slide, please. Here at PAGCOR, we envision that by 2028, PAGCOR shall be the leading gaming authority in the Asia-Pacific region that is innovative, proactive, and socially responsible. For us to effectively perform our mandate, we have identified the following mission statements. First, to create an environment that propels the development of the Philippine gaming and entertainment industry. Second, to be a responsible and responsive partner of the Philippine government, its nation building programs. And third, to establish and enforce a regulatory framework that preserves the integrity of the Philippine gaming industry. On corporate social responsibility, our programs are primarily anchored on the agency's mission to sustain the Philippine government's nation-building efforts. We are engaged in various CSR programs directed towards the Philippine youth, indigent families, victims of calamities, to name a few. Our CSR programs include infrastructure projects, such as school buildings, hospitals, and multipurpose evacuation centers, relief operations in disaster-stricken areas, 
distribution of hygiene kits to public school students, donation of medicines, medical equipment and facilities, wheelchairs, and even medical financial assistance to indigent patients, provision of computers to public schools and other agencies, among others. Pagor also brings joy to thousands of less privileged Filipinos under the care of charitable institutions in the country during the Christmas season through our annual gift-giving tradition. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in the first quarter of 2020, Pagor and its licensees were also at the forefront of providing essentials to frontliners and communities affected by the lockdown. Also in 2017, the agency and its licensed partners also provided housing to thousands of locals in Marawi City who were displaced by the Marawi siege. Next slide, please. At this point, I am proud to share with you PACOR's accomplishments for the years 2020 to 2022. For last year, 2022, our contributions to nation building amounted to 40,674,000. Gross gaming revenue was recorded at 240 billion point three three eight, and our total income from gaming operations 55 billion point zero five three. For 2021, our contributions to nation building amounted to 27 billion point nine one seven. Gross gaming revenue recorded at 113 billion point zero nine one, and income from gaming operations at 32 billion point six three one. In 2020. Even at the height of the pandemic, the contributions to nation building was recorded at 39 billion point six zero one, gross gaming revenue at 98 billion point seven nine nine, and income from gaming operations at 29 billion point nine nine five. Pagor and GCG has strong relations, which influence our efficiency and effectiveness as a partner for government's nation building program. PAGR and GCG practice regular coordination with respect to our commitments as reflected in our annual performance scorecard, where our accomplishments translate to more efficient provision of services to our fellow Filipinos and higher contributions to nation building. Our relations also help build public trust and confidence as we diligently comply with the mandated postings in the transparency seal section in our official website as well as comply with the GCG requirement to include the transactions in its citizens' charter as one of the measures in the performance scorecard, pursuant to RA 11032, or in act promoting ease of doing business and efficient delivery of government service. Ladies and gentlemen, this 2023 PACOR is celebrating its 40th anniversary, and we look forward to more years of providing quality public service to the nation and increasing our contributions to sustain the Philippine government's social, civic, and national development programs. Thank you very much and have a good day to everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Diane, for that presentation. Now may I call on uh, Mr. Romeo B. Carandang, the first vice president and head of the Provident Fund Department and OIC, of the Human Resource Management Group of the Development Bank of the Philippines. Good morning, sir. Uh, and thanks, uh, Ms. Ann Ruth. Of course, uh, to our uh, Chairman, Justice Apiros, to our Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Mortel and uh, Berberabi Martinez, uh, of course, to our all uh, co-workers in the GFIs, good morning to all of you. Uh, about DBT, uh, let me uh, go back a bit in the history uh, or to introduce you uh, DBT. DBT's history uh, can be traced back to turning the Commonwealth when the early infrastructure for development financing was laid by the government. Uh, in 1935, the National and Loan and Investment Board was created to coordinate and manage government uh, trust funds such as postal savings funds and the teacher's retirement fund. Uh, in 1939, the Agricultural and uh, Industrial Bank, which, which absorbs the functions of the NAL, NLIB, was created and started to harness government resources until the outbreak of war. In 1947, the government created the Rehabilitation Finance, Finance Corporations under RA no. number 85, which absorbs the assets and took over the functions of AIB. The RFC provided credit facilities for the development of agriculture, commerce, and industry, and the construction of properties damaged by the war. 
In 1958, the RFC was uh, recognized into the De Development Bank of the Philippines and changed in corporate name, marks the shift from rehabilitation to broader activities. With an only initial capitalization of 500 million subscribed by the government, the DBB expanded its facilities and operations to accelerate national development efforts. This uh, forward trust saw the establishment of a network of branches throughout the country. The DBP tapped both foreign and local funds sources to complement its capital resources. Credits was, were obtained directly from international uh, financial institutions. The, the DBP delivered to the economy substantial benefit in capital formation, employment, uh, employment generation, and increase in revenues, particularly in the countryside. And in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, former uh, President Aquino issued uh, EO number 81 that uh, revised the uh, charter of the bank. In uh, 1995, the DBP was granted an expanded banking license and attained universal uh, banking status. In 1998, uh, former uh, President Fidel B. Ramos signed RA 8523 amending a DBP's 1986 charter among the major provisions incorporated in the new charter were in the increase of authorized capitalization from 5 billion to 35 billion. Today, DBP sharpens its development focus as the country's infrastructure bank. The bank is for national growth by funding projects that raise economy, econom economies competitiveness. Uh, focusing on sectors with the biggest and most immediate impact on every Filipino well-being. These perhaps infrastructure projects such as roads and highways, power and water generation and distributions, schools and hospitals. DBP today continues to fund various projects and various programs uh, that will lead to the, uh, sustainable development. To give you a few, uh, to give you a few programs that DBP is doing now, we have the sustainable waste uh, management for enhanced environmental product, uh, protection. The SWIFT program aims to support the strict implementation of Republic Act Number no. Nine Zero Zero Three or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of Two Thousand and Republic Act Nine Number no. Sixty Nine Sixty Nine or the Toxic Substances and Hazardous and Nuclear Waste Act of 1990. The objective of the, pro of the program is to contribute to the development of solid and hazardous waste management facilities and waste to energy projects by providing credit assistance uh, to public and private companies in order to help protect the environment and address uh, climate change. We also have a solar merchant power uh, financing or the SMPP, the SMPP financing program is designed to support the attainment of government's target of 35% renewable energy in the country's energy mix by 2030 per Philippine uh, Energy Plan. It is expected to contribute to the government's goal of increasing solar photovoltaic capacity in the country from 2.16 gigawatt in 2020 to 15.9 gigawatt in 2030. In addition, DPP also has a building affordable homes accessible to every Filipino or each Bahay program. The Bahay program is a credit facility for the housing sector covering the end-to-end -end process of housing development from land acquisition to site development and shelter construction. It aims to contribute to the national government's target, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable through financing. This will help address the gap in mass housing by providing credit assistance through short-term and long-term uh, financing. We also have our swine repopulation, rehabilitation and recovery uh, credit. The swine tree credit program is a credit window to support the national government's effort in the recovery and repopulations of the local swine industry through financing of biosecured farm projects. <laughs> In addition to this, DPP also has Rural Agro-Enterprise Partnership for Inclusive Development and Growth, or Rapid Growth. The Rapid Growth Credit Facility is a credit assistance program 
to support the, our, uh, the rapid growth project of the national government. The rapid growth uh, project was conceptualized by the Department of Trade and Industry and funded by the International Fund for Agricultural Development. One of the key features of the rapid growth project is the conditional matching grants. Grant fund support will be provided to qualified proponents to enhance their overall competitiveness level and for the development of the specific agricultural value chain. It also aims to provide the necessary development intervention to help improve agricultural production, productivity, and quality. Uh, from pre-war up to now, DBP is doing uh, this development projects that is sustainable and uh, with the, with the uh, presence of uh, our partner, GCG, we, are, uh, we believe that DBP, uh, after 76 years of service, will still continue to serve to the countries uh, and to its people for a sustainable development. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sir Romy Karandang from DPP. I'd like to give a shout out to all of our viewers from Pagcor and from Landbank. Thank you so much for watching. And now we'll have our open forum. Let's uh, bring in everyone onto stage. Let's bring in everyone. Okay, did I miss anyone? Okay, so everyone here. Hi, may I acknowledge uh, the PAGCOR Chairman and CEO, Mr. Alejandro L. Tenko. Thank you for joining us, sir. And since you're here now, sir, can I start with you? <laughs> can I start a, my question, the Q&A with you, sir? You're not on mute, po kayo, sir. Mr. Tenko. If magandang uh, umaga po, Ma'am Ann. Uh, yes, good morning, sir. The Justice Kiros, the uh, Commissioner uh, GG, the Commissioner Motel, uh, sa lahat po ng uh, nakikisa sa webinar na ito ngayong umaga, uh, isang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Uh, okay lang, sir, I'll start with you, ah. <laughs> Just Ma have one question. Ma'am, 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 Opo, sir. Kasi wala po kayo kanina. Please, bakit naman uh, sasama ko lang eh. Nakita ko pa lang kibigyan ko si Attorney Ted Fernandez. Uh, nakita ko uh, si Ted representing Justice. Happy birthday to Chairman Justice Tinga. Uh, thank you po. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, birthday ni Chairman Tinga ngayon. Happy birthday po. Pakipaabot niyo po ang pagbati po kay TV Chairman Justice Dante Tinga. Hintay po namin kay Mamaya Chairman sa... O, oh, eh, nag-sabi ako, nag-message uh, ako sa kanya, hindi ako makararating. Anyway, I, I'll uh, makasabi naman nila eh, privado yung ating pinag-uusapan. Justice Kiros, <laughs> magandang umaga sa iyo. Good morning din po. Kamusta kayo? Ma'am Gigi, Ma Gigi, kumusta ka? And okay naman, Chairman. Commissioner. Good, Commissioner Mortel, nandiyan ka. Yes, sir. Good morning, Chairman. Sa ating pong ibang mga kasama sa PCSO, Landbank, yung madinig ko kanina at uh, lahat po nang nakikisa sa mga ganito. Uh, okay, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll start with you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. So my question is, PAGCOR had a strong uh, first quarter finish with a total revenue rising by 42.8% year on year to 17.7 .7 billion pesos. How wow. do these earnings translate to contributions to nation building? Um, al alam niyo po, yung um, aming charter at uh, meron po mga automatic na requirements kami. Uh, sa aming pong uh, income, eh, pag lumalaki po yan, lumalaki din ang contribution ng PAGCOR sa nation building. Uh, dahil kami po ay, ang PAGCOR po ay 
uh, magsimula ng uh, itinatag. Talagang pangunahin na po sa charter at sa sa amin tungkulin ay magkaloob ng uh, contribution sa nation building. So may may formula po yan eh. Uh, okay. Kita namin automatic mam at 5% pupunta okay. na po agad yan sa franchise tax. Yung po sa nakitirang 95%, 50% po kagad doon, basically 50%, ay tuloy na po sa uh, National Treasury. Uh, yan po ay mandando po na 50%, nung nakitirang 95% ay punta na po sa National Treasury. Uh, matapos po noon, meron pong ilang sangay ng pamahalaan ang aming pinagkakaloban ng tulong. Meron pong 5 million piso buwan-buwan na pinagkakaloob tayo sa Dangerous Drugs Board. Uh, so basically, 60 million per ano na po yun. Uh, matapos po nun eh, 5% muli ng kita ng pagkor ay i- pinagkakaloob po natin sa Philippine Sports Commission. Okay. Uh, automatic po yun. 5% okay. na naman ay mawawala. And then, lahat po ng mga siyudad, probinsya, or uh, mga munisipyo na uh, nag-host ng isang casino uh, or mga e-gaming centers, meron pong tinatawag yan na host city share. Kung saan meron pong pinagkakaloob on a monthly basis ang pagcore na tulong sa iba't ibang mga siyudad, probinsya or munisipyo na, nag, na meron pong property or presence ang pagcore. Meron din pong uh, isang porsyento na ipinagkakaloob ang pagkor doon sa tinatawag na Board of Claims. Yung po bang mga nabilanggo na hindi naman dapat. Kami po ay nagre-remit ng 1% ng aming kita diretso po sa, sa, sa Board of Claims para matulungan po yung ating mga kababayan, kapwa Pilipino, who were unjustly imprisoned. Uh, yung pompondo na yun. Doon nga po pala sa 50% na pinagkaloob natin ng ating uh, kita, yung pong 50% of the 50% ay allotted po yun doon sa Universal Healthcare Act. Kung saan, uh, alam naman natin siguro, kailan lamang ay tumaas ang beneficyo ng ating mga PhilHealth members. Yes. And dating kung ikaw ay inoopera ng mga iba't ibang klase ng sakit, ang natanggap mo lang ganun. Eh, because of the Universal Health Act, the, not only did the coverage uh, expand, but the amount that is being given or being allocated for every uh, uh, sickness or any operation or any medical emergency, tumaas din po yan. 50% po ng 50% na ipinagkakalog namin galing sa net income tuloy po yun sa Universal Healthcare Act. So, kasama po ang pagkor sa pagkakaloob ng mga beneficyo ng PhilHealth in that regard. Pagkatapos po nun, ay meron din pong pinagkakaloob kaming incentives sa lahat ng kumakatawan sa atin bansa. Kumakatawan sa bansang Pilipinas ng mga sports uh, events uh, kung saan-saan sa buong mundo. So every time an, a Filipino athlete will participate in a uh, competition outside mm-hmm. the Philippines, or sometimes within the Philippines, and they uh, win medals or they're mm-hmm. awarded medals, and at the same time they break records. Uh, let's say for a 100-meter sprint, it, it used to be X seconds and you 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 do a better job, then uh-huh. you are given incentives pagkor po ay katulong sa pagkakalog ng mga incentives okay. na yan. And wag na po nating makakalimutan, 
bukod po do sa franchise tax na binabayad namin na 5%, kami po ay nagbabayad din ng corporate income tax. So, nagbayad ka na ng franchise tax, nagbabayad ka pa ng corporate income tax. So, yun po ang aming mga tulong. And bukod doon, kung meron pang sumobra sa kita, ay we are required by law to remit 50% of our income in the preceding year uh, as a form of a dividend. Ang totoo, uh, malukod ko pong uh, gustong ibalita sa inyong lahat na sa darating pong sa susunod na linggo, uh, I will hand over to the National Treasurer of the Philippines a check in the amount of close to 2 billion pesos as uh, the share of the national government sa uh, income, net income ng pagkor nito po nakaraang 2000 or 2022. Kaya uh, ipagkakalog din ako niya. Kaya kung makikita ninyo, the more income we generate, mas malawak po ang contribution ng pagkor sa nation building. Okay. Yun lang po, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, I have one question here siguro para kay Chairman Kiros po ito. Among the mandates of the GCG is to rationalize GOCCs. What does rationalization mean and how does this promote efficiency and viability among GOCCs? Well, hello. Yes, sir. Uh, we rationalize, meaning we try to... Uh, examine, evaluate their performance as well as uh, whether they uh, perform the uh, performance target. That's the uh, main uh, rationalization as well as uh, if we found out some of some of them, they call it a bleeding GOCC, then we, we may recommend for its uh, abolition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we will, uh, as mandated, we are the uh, oversight body mm -hmm. to ensure avoiding dissipation of the public funds. At present, close to 11 uh, trillion, the assets of the government uh, fund, which is uh, entrusted among the GOCCs. Mm -hmm. Can you also uh, enlighten us, sir, about streamlining? That's also another thrust of the present administration. Yeah. Oh, streamlining oh, yes. that also. Is one What's of the, the directions. Mm -hmm. Now, that what well, streamlining, not not necessarily to uh, to reduce employment, but uh, as it was mandated by or even pronounced the direction by President Marcos. Mm -hmm. of right sizing to avoid redundancy mm -hmm. okay to be more to be more practical on that point mm -hmm. uh, for example this is an exaggerated example one restroom and yet two janitors attending to a four by four restroom that's too much so we have to assign or we have to uh, uh, look at how the organization of each GOCC to be more efficient mm -hmm. to serve the public well. Mm -hmm. You know, serving the public is not only serving them, but it must be coupled with well. We have mm -hmm. to serve them well. So uh, streamlining not, does not necessarily to reduce employment, but to correct the uh, proper... Uh, distribution of human resource or manpower to attend to the necessity of the public. Ma'am Ruth. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, let me see. I have some questions here for, for land banks or LCID. Uh, the Department of Finance has been saying that financial inclusion is among the priorities of the government. True enough, in land banks 2023 performance scorecard, 
the bank included a target of 20,000 new BDA accounts, as well as 10% increases in both digital fund transfer transactions and digital payment transactions. Who are the bank's target new clients and how will these targets be achieved? Uh, yes, uh, Anne, uh, thank you for that question. Um, you know, as mentioned, no, uh, Land Bank is the biggest GFI and, you know, we service in our ecosystem, not just, you know, mainly in government agencies, mm -hmm. but, uh, well, we also go, we also service non-government developmental partners and very much consistent with the policy of government to adopt digital payments for government disbursements and collections. We would like to be the you know back of choice no, for digital okay. transactions through the various channels that we already have in place, as mentioned, Kanina, no? And uh, we continue to promote our digital channels to the private uh, merchants, such mm -hmm. as utility companies, cooperatives, and the like to generate more payment transactions from our respective clients. On the retail side, naman, we would like to achieve the 10% increase in the digital okay. banking transactions. Uh, well, Landback would like to target and penetrate uh, retail clients no, for, by promoting QR payments mm -hmm. for public service providers such as market vendors, tricycle drivers, convenience sari sari stores. And these transactions would normally source, will be sourced from uh, you know, accounts of um, existing clients like BDA, you know, basic deposit accounts, which mm -hmm. are opened with minimal KYC requirements. And in our efforts to include you know, land bank in you know, actively participating in the program of BSP called Paleng QR. You know? We have so far joined 15 rollouts where we set up booths to facilitate on-the-spot account openings to promote QR payments. And of course, you know, uh, other programs like uh, autom automated fare collection system, for convenient use of contactless, cashless payment instruments in public utility vehicles. Well, mm -hmm. very soon we will uh, launch a digital loan collection or payment platform for our okay. loan clients. Mm. So that's very interesting, Mr. Baginina. Thank you so much. We have a lot to look forward to pala sa Land Bank, no? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. How about, thank you. How about po sa DBP? So in DBP's 2020, 2023 scorecard indicates that the bank targets to integrate sustainability measures into its operations and processes. What are these sustainability principles and how do these impact customer experience, if any? Well, dito po sa DBP, uh, we're always uh, doing uh, sustainable development programs. Mm -hmm. And of course, with our four pillars of development that tinitingnan, uh, number one is infrastructure, environment, uh, social development, and uh, of course, MSMEs. Uh, in our missions uh, to support particularly the MSMEs and the infrastructures uh, industry of our country, mm -hmm. and po yung uh, major sustainability programs ng Banco. Uh, we aim to be uh, the, the biggest infrastructure bank of the country. And of mm -hmm. course, our great support to MSME uh, shall pave way for the uh, development of this, uh, we say, uh, yung sector na medyo napapabayaan po ng ating uh, financing uh, uh, industry or sector. Sa ngayon po, ang, ang DBP ay uh, nakapokus sa development ng mga ganitong klaseng uh, programa. In, hindi po natin uh, iniiwan ito dahil ito yung ating mandate and we want to be true to our mandates na talagang tulungan to malilit na to. From the very start, the DBP was uh, founded in uh, 1947 or even uh, pre-war. Uh, it always a partner of the national government into its uh, sustainable uh, development uh, and of course for better uh, support to our uh, uh, people. Uh, hindi po natin nakakaligtaan na tayo ay maraming programa na nakakatulong especially doon po sa mga maliliit. Kaya yung pong ating especially sa mga pabahay natin we have mm -hmm. a new programs for bahay na uh -huh. to ensure na ang ating uh, mga uh, population ng ating bansa ay magkaroon ng uh, sapat na pabahay. Okay. In, walang maiwan, walang uh, pamilya mm -hmm. maiwan na walang tahanan and it is uh, in partnership 
with the, our national uh, government. Okay. Just a follow-up, sir. The bank also targets to expand its countryside reach to 80% of the municipalities and cities in the countryside. How will the bank do this? Well, uh, in our uh, programs, mm -hmm. we envision to expand our uh, lending uh, centers, our branches oh. in the countryside. And uh, mm -hmm. we hope that GCG will uh, uh, help us uh, to accomplish this. Uh, by doing so, we, we can uh, do our mission to the countryside mm -hmm. if we will be given chance to expand. And uh, of course, uh, if the government will also provide us the, the right uh, capitalization. At this point, uh, the bank, uh, kailangan po, kung mabibigyan pa kami ng malaking capitalization, uh, mm -hmm. imagine we just started at uh, 35 billion. Sa, sa ngayon po, ang asset po ng banko is mahigit na 1 trillion. Kung mabibigyan po kami ng mga about 300 billion ng, ng national government, we can, we can do more and uh, we can do more sustainable assistance to our uh, countryside. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Romeo. Um, Attorney Lisa, uh, can you cite the notable accomplishments to date of PCSO? Actually, uh, thank you, ma'am, for that question. Um, as I mentioned earlier in our first presentation, we uh, we had a record-breaking um, revenue generation in 2022. This, of course, translated to higher um, contributions to the national government. And similar uh -huh. to Chair uh, uh, Pagcor uh, Chair's uh, report earlier, we have uh, remitted uh, today, uh, actually today, we are going to remit um, our dividend contribution to the government, which is 50% of our revenue and the uh, and our uh, of our um, earnings and that would amount to around 2.6 billion pesos. Okay. We are remitting that today, uh, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, uh, we we also contribute to government. We have paid billions also in terms of documentary stop tax. Um, we pay our income tax and of course our documentary stamp tax, which is 20%. And uh, we have, uh, well, for now, our challenge is we are asking Congress, of course, to reduce this 20% to 10%. I think PAGCOR is paying 10%, sir. 10% po yata kayo, Chair Tenko. Kami po at 20%. So um, this one, of course, impacts our charity works. Nevertheless, we have continued to, we have continued to, contribute to government. This year, we are releasing 225 uh, patient transport vehicles and an additional 400 uh, PTVs. Okay. Thank you. So, and just a follow-up, uh, Attorney Lisa, how has the GCG yes. contributed to making the agency more transparent and responsive to the needs of the public? Yes. Um, well, as mentioned earlier by the chair uh, and the commissioners, there is the scorecard which uh, we comply with. So, yung scorecard po na yon measures our performance as a GOCC and ensures that we comply with all the requirements of the law as well as the issuances of GCG. So, with the with the uh, trust of the GCG, if you saw the yung acronym po nilang great, diba? so good government, uh, good mm -hmm. governance. Yes, uh, yes, yes. The GM Robles is very strict regarding our compliance with GCG issuances. So for our uh, transpa the transparency, our the transparency in our operations, we also comply with the customer satisfaction uh, by, uh, by virtue of the joint memorandum circular of GCG and ARTA. And, uh, and uh, as far as the, the, the relationship with GCG is concerned, the GCG has been very supportive of our concerns regarding the CPCS, especially the CPCS and other benefits of our employees. So we have closely coordinated with GCG and ang maganda po is GCG has been open. In fact, the chairman and the commissioners have been present in all the meetings with PCSO. Po. So 
um, that in not in a nutshell would um, would uh, describe the relationship of PCSO and the GCG. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Lisa. Um, for GCG, what is the compensation and position classification system in CPCS, and what is this, what is its importance? Because there's a question here. It is a Facebook. I think that's related. Medyo mahaba po and hindi nag ano eh hindi po nag identify kung saan agency po siya. Kung makapagtanong po kayo, tanong po ninyo. In the previous delays, ano ang cost at sino ang cost? These things has to be brought into awareness para mas solutionan. Right now, ang malinaw lang sa atin may delay. Yun lang. Sino, an, ano, bakit? Wala tayong alam. Considering yung restructuring ay matagal ang matagal na pinag-aralan before tapos as of the latest info nag-hire pa raw para pag-aralin ulit eh yun na nga ang ginawa before salamat po regarding po ito sa CPCS salamat po yun, sir i don't know who can answer this po from G GCG <coughs> may i uh, to my two commissioners any thoughts on that Okay, um, yes, Kong uh, Gigi. Uh, as to the first question of Miss Ruth po, Opa. yung CPCS po natin, yan po yung nag, uh, nagagawad ng compen compensation po para sa mm -hmm. ating mga nagtatrabaho sa GOCC. At yes, uh, lalagay rin po yung karampatang uh, mga position classification po doon sa istruktura po ng isang GOCC. So ito po ay uh, gaya ng nasabi ko kanina, ito po ay ipinasa para maiwasan po natin yung mga excessive, unauthorized, illegal or unconscionable allowances and benefits na dati pong ibinibigay ng mga GOCC sa mga nagtatrabaho. Now, dun sa pangalawa pong tanong tungkol po sa um, delay, uh, gusto po sana namin malaman ng mas uh, maigi kung ano po yung pinag-uusapan dito. Kasi uh, alam po natin na kapag ka pumunta sa amin ng GOCC at maayos po ang istruktura nila, mm -hmm. hindi po nila kailangang mag-reorganize, ipapasa na po ito sa CSO or sa Corporate Standards Office para po malagyan naman ng um, kaakibat na kompensasyon yung mga posisyon na naroon. So ito po ay hindi naman basta-basta lamang na ginagawa ng ating mga kawani dito sa GCG kung hindi ay pinag-aaralan po ito. At gaya po na nasabi ni Chairman kanina, kung merong mga hindi mga kailangang uh, position, yun po ay tinatanggal natin para hindi po nagkakadoble-doble yung mga position sa isang uh, organisasyon. So, um, uh, san, uh, kami po sa GCG under the leadership of Chairman Quiroz, uh, lagi pong ang sinasabi ni Chairman dito ay ayaw niya ng delay. Yes. Kaya po, um, at meron naman po mga uh, turnaround time yan. Meron mm -hmm. po kami periods within which na kailangan namin maparating agad sa chairman ang mm -hmm. mga pinag-aralan. Kaya uh, gusto po sana namin uh, mas maintindihan kung saan po nanggagaling yung tanong kung yeah, ano po okay. ang delay na sinasabi po nila. Mm -hmm. Yes, oo nga po. Eh. Hindi kasi sinabi kung saan agency po siya. So sana whoever answered that, who asked that question. Okay. Yun. Sa pag or daw. Hmm. Okay. Sige po. We'll find out po kung saan agency po siya. And here's another question po for GCG. Siguro para kay Commissioner Mortel ito. How does the GCG ensure the GOCCs have competent officers? Tama po ba sa inyo to? What is the fit and proper rule and what is the process for monitoring the performance of GOCC officers? Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, Justice, if I may? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, magandang umaga po. 
uh, GCG has the uh, we have memorandum circular the fit and proper rule. Yes. It's a uh, circular 2012-05. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of the mandate of the GCG uh -huh. to ensure that all uh, members of the board of directors that will uh, mm -hmm. be appointed has been subjected or have been subjected to the fit and proper rule. Ang okay. ibig sabihin po niyan ay amin pong uh, uh, ine-evaluate kung yung pong mga board of directors na ma-appoint uh, bago namin isubmit sa ating presidente for the appointment ay pumasa mm -hmm. sa aming tinatawag na fit and proper rule. Number one, okay. titignan po namin kung ito po ba'y qualified. Number two, titignan po namin kung meron po itong disqualification. Mm -hmm. Titignan din po namin ang integrity, educational attainment, management mm -hmm. skill, kung ito po ay appropriate sa kanilang dapat mapaglagyan na uh, GOCC. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, kapag naman po sila ay na-appoint na, kasama po sa pinatawag namin ng performance evaluation ng directors na ginagawa din po namin. In fact, to the extent of monitoring the attendance of the members of the board, piditing ng po yun ng, ating, uh, ng aming ahensya. Hindi lamang po yung kabuuan ng GOCC sa aming tinitingnan, kundi pati po yung mismong performance na kinokontribute na ibinibigay ng bawat miyembro ng board of directors at saka po ng management. Ngayon po sila po ay binibigyan lamang ng isang taon na term. Kapag po sila ay hindi nakapag-perform na maayos, they will not be considered to be renewed in the submission of our uh, list of nominees to the president. Kaya po ang mga members po ng board of directors ng GOCCs, yan po talaga ay sinisikap nilang makapag-perform na maayos dahil kagaya po ngayon by June 30, tapos na po yung kanilang term. Kapag sa performance evaluation po namin hindi sila po masa, hindi po namin sila isasama sa rekomendasyon na ma-renew sa Office of the President. Sa pamagitan po ng mga institutional tools na to, makakasiguro po ang ating GOCCs na malalagyan po ito natin ng tamang membro sa Board of Directors. Okay. Thank you, sir. Di ba po, you just came, you came out with a press release uh, recently po, no? That you were asking the GOCC uh, officials to submit yung mga papers nila for consideration yes. ulit. No? In When is in the fact, deadline for that po? Uh, ito, pong, ito pong month na to, pinagsasubmit po namin sila. In okay. fact, kahapon po, we have started already conducting our uh, um, interviews. Okay. okay. Nagbabalidate na po kami ng mga uh, applicants at saka mm -hmm. ng mga members ng board ang gusto po marinyo. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Ito na po. This is what question that we cannot avoid. Okay. Hello and good morning. I'm from Business World. Si Keisha Taasa. And I would like to know how will the GCG monitor or supervise the possible land back and DBP merger? For land back and DBP, what is the stance of both banks on this likely merger? Thank you. I think si... Uh, Chairman Kiros? Yes. To sa part ng GCG. And I don't know if uh, Landbank and DBP would like to answer. I'll get to you later po. Ha? Go ahead, sir. At least, yeah, thank you very much. At this stage, mm -hmm. uh, GCG is still evaluating the, the situation and we are waiting for all stakeholders to submit their position to that effect so as nobody will be left behind and to be heard as uh, due process required under our constitution. It is uh, enshrined in our constitution, Article 3, Section 1, that there must be due process. So in this regard, we are uh, waiting different positions, different stakeholders who may submit to us for our consideration mm -hmm. but uh, at this point we have no uh, final recommendation yet but still awaiting the position whether for merger or not we welcome their positions with regards uh, by the way uh, madam ruth yes with sir regards to cpcs 
the yes, one sir. who have interposed uh, uh, an observation, there seems to be a delay. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, we cannot avoid the delay because uh, some of the GOCCs have uh, more than 10,000 employees. Uh -huh. They have to classify it carefully. So there is a restructuring of their uh, human resource. Now, I, I adopted, I introduced that the technical personnel of the GOCC may come to our office to have a face-to-face -face discussion of all the nitty-gritty of this uh, classification so as we could compatible uh, assign now what we call job grades. Okay. And therefore, they have the drop. We have because the, the procedure is this. The reward will submit it to the board. The board uh, will uh, approve it and the board will uh, go to the supervising agency. But I suggested, why not? Why not? And then, and the supervising agency, excuse me, will, will submit it to the GCG for its approval. But I adopted the reverse okay. procedure. What is that? the uh, GOCC and the technical team of the GCG will work on it so as they could easily arrive whatever is necessary to calibrate the mm -hmm. position and classification. And then by principle, ahead of time, the uh, human resource of the GOCC may submit it to the board for its approval with okay. Uh, informing them, in principle, this matter is already been approved by the GCG. Okay. Now, again, immediately they have to forward it to the supervising agency, and the supervising agency will give it to us for our approval. And since it is already been prejudged, so we unnecessarily avoid unnecessary delay. So we adapted that. Okay. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, whoever asked that question, but they have to take on to take into consideration <laughs> the different numerous yeah. employment or employees that mm -hmm. they have to evaluate for the reorganization. Perhaps that could be the delay. But in so far as uh, <coughs> this, we swiftly we are trying our best to be on time as long because uh, we don't. I, I cannot afford delay in our office mm -hmm. at our uh, mom room. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, would, uh, sir Elsie, would you like to answer this? For Land Bank and DBP, what is the stand of both banks on the likely merger? Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Ruth, and thank you to our uh, uh, from Business World. And yes. um, as, as uh, everyone knows, man, no, uh, we are a government financial institution and uh, our chairman is the Secretary of Finance. And uh -huh. we, will, we will only abide by you know, the approvals of the Office of the President and, of course, the GCG and uh, the, you know, what, what our chairman would like to propose. No? And the uh, proposal ng ating chairman of uh, the DB of Land Bank is uh who's the secretary of finance is for the merger of the two banks and uh, i think that's the only position that we have uh, whatever is the position of the chairman thank you okay. thank you sir uh sa dbp po would you like to uh, comment po on this uh, i will ask uh, my uh, partner lawyer here to answer that uh, question please go ahead sir uh, with all due respect to the GCG, of course, and to Land Bank, we submit our our position that uh, we oppose the merger on legal grounds. Okay. Thank you. As short as that. Thank you, sir, so much for your for your statement on that. Um, looking through the questions, if I can, if my, if I may ask, uh, Chairman. Tenko, paano po mas masabi na kailangan i-privatize ang isang GOCC if nag-perform ng maayos? 
breaking the record pa po madalas ang income ng PAGCO. Baka po there's more to lose if ma-privatize ang PAGCO. Who would like to answer this? Baka... Uh, yeah. Yes, um, can, I, can I answer that? Go ahead, I, I, sir. I think uh, the question is directed to PAGCOR. Mm -hmm. um, gusto ko lang pong liwanagin na ang, ang desisyon po ng inyong lingkod ay hindi naman po ng, ng entire board of PAGCOR. Tungkol sa privatization, ay hindi po nagmumula sa punto na malaking kita ang uh, basihan o uh, hindi malaki ang kita ang basihan. Ang, ang maliwanag po na pinanggagalingan ng inyong lingkod, ngayon din naman ng members of the board sa uh, issue po ng privatization, ay yung pong... Uh, isang pagbabago ng na nakaugalian ng nagaganap no uh, we we have to distinguish uh, what is really the role of pagcor and very clear mm -hmm. ang dapat pong mamayani rito ay pagcor should be a regulator uh, and not both a regulator and an operator. operator. Uh, maliwanag na maliwanag po. Mm -hmm. Very ethical po ang kasalukuyang setup. Mm -hmm. Sa anyo man po tingnan, nagkakaloob po ang pagkod ng lisensya sa mga IR, halimbawa, gayon din naman sa uh, maliliit na mga kasino sa iba't ibang lugar ng ating bansa. Mm -hmm. Pero sa kabilang dako naman, ay nag-ooperating kami ng mga kasino. Yeah. So, saan kayo nakakita? Dito lang, hindi na po tayo lalayo pa. Sa Entertainment mm -hmm. City, halimbawa, apat tatlo po, <coughs> giging apat ang pag-ooperate ng kasino dyan, na binigyan ng pagkod ng lisensya bilang mga IR. Pero, uh, maybe, uh, a few hundred meters away, we are operating casinos. Mm -hmm. Diyan po sa Heritage, diyan po sa Maitas, at doon po sa makapagal area na yan, eh, meron din kami mm -hmm. slot machine arcade. So, can yes. you imagine, you granted a license to somebody who is committed to invest a billion US dollars for a certain period of time, and then, Right across them, you, as the regulator who granted that same license, yeah. will be operating your own casino. Yep. Nalabanan mo yung pinagkaluban mo ng pagkakataong maghanap buhay. Mm -hmm. So, very clear, uh, we're not talking here of uh, ito ba'y mababawasan ang kita or uh, ang kita ba'y uh, hindi na magiging malaki. Hindi po ganun ang ang principal na dahilan. Kung hindi po yun talaga, we already have to make a stand. Okay. Ang patkul ba eh, isang regulatory body na pwedeng magpagkaloob ng mga lisensya at pagkatapos ay sa sariling uh, mga lugar ay eh, magtatayo din ang sarili niyang kasino na dinalabanan yung sarili mo mga pinagkalooban ng lisensya. Mm -hmm. Or, dapat na lang bang ito ay maging isang regulatory body. Sa buong mundo po, sa akin pong pagsisiyasa at uh, sa pagkakaalam, tayo lang po ang regulatory body na operator din at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, ang akin dito, baguhin na natin habang maaga. Okay. Or, ngayon, yung maling uh, ginagawa ng pagkot. Ngayon, doon po sa nag-aalala kung papagsak ang, ang kita, eh, sa umpisa po yan, definitely, <coughs> excuse me, magkakaroon po ng, ng pagbaba ng income. Pero, dahilan sa 
kung inyong uh, susuriin mas maigi, magbabawas ka ng tao. Hindi ka, in by the way, yung pagbabawas ng tao ay eh, liliwat. Gusto ko nang gamitin ang pagkakataon itong maipabot sa lahat ng nakikinig. Go ahead, sir. Ipagkakaloob po ng PAGCOR ang full retirement benefits kung sino man yung uh, maisasantabi because of the private residue. Bukod po ron, I will make sure that uh, uh, in the terms of reference for mm -hmm. the meeting that will be held, we will require the winning bidder to absorb uh, anywhere between 70 to 80 percent of the current employees of the property that, that they will bid on. And if they win, they will have to. Kakailanganin po nilang i-hire yung atin pong mga empleyadong doon sa kanilang mga property na Ma, na, mapapanalunan ko sakaling nag-participate sila. So, mm -hmm. and then, that's not, that does not prevent them from even hiring more. You know, uh -huh. gentlemen, the biggest asset of PAGCOR is its human resources. Mm -hmm. Eh, pag ikaw ay isang prospektibong negosyante na, na gusto mo mag-bid, ang una mo kagad na isipin dyan sa ganitong uri ng hanap buhay, continuity. Can you imagine when you take over and when you win, you bid, you win, you're awarded, wala na pong, hindi na kayo maghihintay pa ng ilang buwang magpe-training ka pa ng iyong empleyat. Magpupuro ka pa ng anong dapat nilang yun. Ito ay, once you assume on the very instance, the very minute that you 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 take over, may continuity na dahil yung mga pangkor employees na nandun eh, i-absorb mo na eh. Wala kang tulapat ano eh. Eh, meron na pong katanungan dito si Juan yeah. Canyo. Kung na magmamoderate ito. Okay lang sir, sa'yo naman po yan. Related na rin. So ano po uh -huh. ba ang plano sa empleyado. empleyado na if ever ma-privatize? Kung magiging matagumpay po ang privatization efforts ng, ng inyong lingkod, at ngayon din naman ang nagpasama ko sa board, ay eh, una, hindi po ito 19 100% po gagawin natin ay ipagkakalog natin full retirement benefits okay. to all the employees that will be affected by this privatization. Number two, part of the term of reference, terms of reference dun sa bidding, ay Isasama natin na requirement na ang bidder na mananalo o magtatagumpay sa kanyang uh, bid proposal, 70 to 80 percent. Uh, sa lukoy ang pinag-aaralan po, ay dapat nilang i-absorb yung mga MPA. Tapos sabi ko nga, it doesn't stop them from absorbing more. Kaya ako lang binigyan naman ng allowance na 20 percent halimbawa eh. Eh, dapat naman siguro eh, bigyan mo ng pagkakataon yung nakabili o yun ang nalun na magpasok din siya ng sarili niyang tao. So, it is all up to the winning bidder. But at the very least, that, that should be uh, the that should be the, the case. Okay. Yun lang po, uh, Mama. Thank you so much, Chairman. Ay, ito pa pala. Nag-follow up po pala yung nagtanong kanina. Si Johnny Torres naman. Iba naman itong, ano. <laughs> uh, ito, uh, sir. Ito yung follow up po kanina doon sa CPCS. Regard, garlic pala sa PAGCOR. I, I am from PAGCOR. Regarding po sa delayed regarding CPCS. Regarding po sa delayed CPCS. Yeah. And in line with the desire yeah. po ni Chair to avoid, avoid delays. I'm already getting a mental hypothesis that our city is intentionally delayed, deliberately, by certain personalities within us. Why po? No explanation is being given to bank or employees. Why and who is behind or responsible behind these delays? Siyempre po, di ba? Uh, Sean, bilang uh, chairman ng PAGCOR, uh, una, gusto ko lang uh, ipaalam sa iyo 
na hindi ka dapat uh, magka-problema sa mental hypothesis mo. Dahil wala po sa isip ko o sa isip ng board o sino mang official ng PAGCOR, sasama ko na rin ang buong GCG sa pangunan ni Chairman Quiroz na deliberately i-delay ang CPCS assessment. Ako po ay may personal na karanasan kay Justice Quiroz, Commissioner Gigi Berberabe at kay Commissioner Mortel. Wala po sa kanilang isipan na intentionally or deliberately i-delay. Maingat na maingat po ang GCG. Kung malalaman mo, Sean, malaki ang pagkukulang ng pagkor noong mga nakarang administrasyon. Sa pagsasabit ng mga requirements na hinihiling ng GCG sa pagkor noong nakaraang taon. Sampung taon na kung hindi ako nagkakabalik. Kung ito ay hindi na ipabot sa iyo, ng iyong mga superiors eh ngayon sana'y maintindihan mo at hinihiling kong tulungan mo akong magpaliwanag sa kapwa mo intindihan. Kami ngayon una hindi deliberately dinidelay ni Numan GCG or P or ng PAGCOR ang pagpapalabas ng CPCS. Unfortunately hindi nakapag-submit ng ilang taon ang pagkor sa GCG ng mga required documents. So, nung nakita ito ng GCG at ng inyong kasalukuyang board, dali-dali pong nakipag-ugnayan kami sa GCG, si Chairman Quiroz po at ang dalawang commissioner ay nagtatag ng isang grupo sa side nila. Okay. Upang makita lahat ng kailangan, lahat ng deficiencies at kaagad na ipinagkaloob sa pagkor at ipinaalam sa amin na ito ang makulang ninyong dokumento. Okay. Sean, hindi ganun kadaling mag-backtrack ng mga dokumento. Ginagawa namin sa side ni Justice Quiroz, may ginawa siya dito sa side natin sa pagkor aking inatasan ang ating corporate secretary, attorney George Parameda, na magtayo na rin ng isang special na team to address immediately lahat ng deficiencies ng documents natin na dapat isubmit sa GCG. Umasa ka siyon, sa lalong madaling panahon, yan ay maisa sa katuparan na. At yan, inihingi ko sa iyo, ngayon din sa mga kapwa mong pag-Koreans, ang paumanhin unang-una. At hinihingi ako na sana'y bigyan niyo pa kami ng konti pang panahon para makompleto namin lahat ng mga pagkukulang ng nakaraang mga administrasyon sa GCG. Sisiguraduhin ko na sa aking pamumuno bilang chairman niyo ngayon, at sa mga susunod pang mga taon, hindi na mangyayari yung mga nangyari ng mga nakaraan. Nang sa ganon, sa mga susunod na administrasyon eh, ano man ang pangangailangan natin sa GCG, kaagad maaksyon na nito. So, sana'y maintindihan mo, imihingi ako ng tulong sa iyo sa pamamagitan itong webinar na to, na sana'y tulungan mo kung magpaliwanag sa kapwa mo pag Korean, at tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, makakaasa kayo. Una, there is no one who is deliberately delaying all of these things. And secondly, pasalamatan pa natin ang GCG sapagkat sila mismo ang gumagabay sa atin ng sa ganun atin kaagad makuha yung CPCS rating na matagal lang hinahangat ng bawat empleyado ng pagko. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Sean. At gayon din naman sa organizer at nabigyan ako ng pagkakataong makapagpaliwanag tungkol sa bagay. Thank you so much, Chairman. Uh, would anyone from GCG like to add? 
to this. So, so what's happening dito sa pod for? Ma'am Gigi, would you like to share Marami some thoughts? Yes, yes, Chairman. Uh, marami pong salamat sa paliwanag po ni Chairman Al. Thank ko. Uh, makakasigurado po yung nagtanong na talaga pong nag-uusap uh, at uh, nagko-collaborate ang uh, PAGCOR at ang GCG. Hinihintay lang po rin namin ang mga documents that need to be submitted but we understand that it is very difficult to retrieve old documents, especially so that uh, yung last reorganization po yata ng uh, PAGCOR ay napakatagal na po. So, mahirap po talaga para sa PAGCOR yon At uh, inuunawa rin po namin yon And at the same time, uh, rest assured na nag nandito po kami para gabayan sila on uh, how best to be able to submit uh, the documents para makapag-reorganize na po sila and then after that, papasok na po ang application ng CPCS. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bern um, Martinez. Just one more, one last question before we go, sir. Ma'am and sirs. Last na po ito, promise. Ito po. Another implement. May we know the status of CPCS implementation and duty-free? Uh, the CPCS implementation uh, implementation in duty free ay under ang CPCS po is under evaluation na po in sa duty free so um siguro po mga bigyan po kami ng mga another 3 weeks the initial evaluation has already been um uh, uh, concluded but then we need to evaluate uh and the parang ido double check lang po yung ibang items Mm -hmm. Siguro po bigyan niyo po kami ng uh, basta less than a month po, mga three weeks to a, to a month siguro at the most, maximum na po yun. Okay, thank you so much Commissioner Martinez and I'd like to thank you all for spending this morning with us. But before you go, can I ask for your uh, final messages? Uh, can I start with Attorney Lisa of PCSO? Uh, I will... Nakamute kayo, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Like my presentation, I will keep it brief. Ang ihihingin ko na lang po siguro sa mga nakikinig, eh, tumayo po kayo sa loto kasi yung 20 pesos niyo po, malayo ang mararating. Lalo na po. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> natawa, natawa lang po. Na <laughs> tumayo na po tayo, okay. Ano po? Tumayo po tayo sa loto. Nag-plug po ako sa ano Ma'am Ruth kasi ano yung uh, 20 pesos po ng mga mga do, taya natin sa loto malayo pong mararating noon para sa charity natin. Maraming salamat po. Again, hindi po umuurong sa pagtulong ang PCSO. Thank you so much Attorney Lisa. Uh, from the gentleman from DBP, Mr. Sir Romy and Attorney Ted, can I get your final words? Thank you very much uh, Ma'am Ruth. Uh, on behalf of our uh, chairman, Dan, uh, Justice Dante Otinga, who is uh, celebrating his uh, birthday today, and uh, of course, uh, our uh, president and CEO, uh, Michael De Jesus, uh, gusto po namin magpasalamat from DBP for, uh, for these uh, invitations. Ang GCG po sa nakikita namin ngayon is a uh, uh, very good uh, partner, proactive, uh, and even uh, si Justice Kiros mismo and nag encourage sa amin uh, to coordinate uh, with the, agent, with the uh, office uh, ng GCG para mapabilis yung implementation ng aming mga programs. And of course, with the support of uh, Attorney uh, Commissioner uh, Gideon Mortel and uh, my other kababayan, Attorney uh, Geraldine Mar Maria. Uh, thank you very much po to, to all of you. Uh, we hope that... Uh, a continue continuing a partnership between uh, DBP and uh, GCG uh, will be uh, sustainable forever. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See Attorney Ted, would you like to say something okay. before we go? Good morning, Dipo. We are very much uh, in support of the uh, GCG's uh, mission and vision, and we are we would like to take this opportunity to 
thank uh, Chairman Quiroz and my classmate, Attorney Mortel, Commissioner Mortel, and of course, Commissioner Averberapi Martinez for giving us the, uh, not, not, not only expression treatment, but a, a very much understanding uh, position in all our requests with them. And they're so professional attending to us, to our needs, especially in our CPCS and the rest of the requests of the technical staff of DPP. And of course, to this host, we would like to give our, our, our uh, sincere thanks and uh, this opportunity to be given this uh, time to, to, to express our uh, our points on this particular matter. Maraming salamat. Thank you so much, Attorney Ted. Uh, Sir LC, can I hear some words from you before we go? Ay, maraming salamat, Anne. And uh, of course, I would like to thank uh, the GCG you know, uh, for uh, its uh, very, uh, very, you know, very productive engagement with land map. No? Uh, since the uh, chairman Kuros already uh, took over as GCG chair, you know, we had very, very productive um, discussion about how we will bring forward the uh, uh, services of land bank to, uh, you know, as, as uh, we promised to be of service to this nation. And, you know, um, as mentioned Kanina, we're already celebrating our 60th year you know, this mm -hmm. year. And uh, we have lined up a lot of uh, programs uh, to continue to be of service to the nation. Again, maraming maraming salamat on behalf of our uh, uh, President and CEO, uh, Ma'am Cecil uh, Cayosa Baromeo. Uh, maraming salamat at mabuhay po ang lahat. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Chairman Tenko, can, I, can we hear from you before we go? So, yan yung magpasalamat po ako sa tanghaling ito sa organizers ng webinar na to. Ma'am Ann, uh, yung panig at ngayon din naman si A. Chairman Tiros, Commissioners uh, Berbera, Bert Mortel. Ngayon din naman sa iba't ibang mga kinatawan ng uh, mga iba't ibang GOCC na kasama kong uh, humarap sa at nag-participate sa webinar. Uh, nung una, uh, huwag naman mamasamay ng GCG. Hindi ko naman... Uh, I was not familiar. Hindi, hindi ko talaga maintindihan ko ano ang papel na ginagampanan ng GCG uh, over the GOCC at uh, uh, Chairman Quiroz, uh, Justice Quiroz, huwag niyo naman mamasamayin kasama ni Commissioner Berberabi at Commissioner Montel. Eh. Ang una, akala ko isang layer na naman ng, ng uh, uh, parang bureaucracy na nagpapahirap sa mga GOCC. Pero uh, ako naman ay eh, magsasabi sa inyong uh, naiintindihan ko na ngayon. And uh, sumusuporta ako sa, sa GCG because uh, very clear na ang paggabay ninyo sa lahat ng GOCC ay makatutulong sa isang magandang adhikain ng good governance. At uh, yan naman ay tulad nga ng akin na banggit. Uh, sa aming madalas na pakikipag-ugdayan sa GCG, nakita ko at nadadama ko ang tunay na uh, mga nasa sa puso at damdamin ng, ng ni Chairman Quiroz. Ngayon din naman ni, ni Commissioner Gigi at Commissioner uh, Gideon na talagang hangad lang nila ang mailagay sa ayos ang pagpapatakbo ng lahat ng GOCC dito sa ating uh, bansa. Kaya uh, pinasasalamatan ko sila. Itong uh, webinar na ito, eh, isa din namang napakagandang uh, proyekto. And uh, actually, I think, nandiyan ng PCSO, nandiyan ng Land Bank, nandiyan ng DBP, uh, nandito kami sa Pagcor. Uh, I was trying to figure out parang ang Pagcor, ang pinakabatang GOCC dito uh, sa harapang ito. Uh, 
makakaasa ka uh, attorney license na hindi ako aapila na magsugal ang tao. At tulad ng ginawa mo kanina ng pagkakasin. Mag, uh, mag-apila uh, dahil natural na sugarol talaga ang Pilipino. Kaya uh, hindi na ako mag-aapila pa. But uh, I, I log the this program. Umasa po kayo na ang pagkor ay uh, nasa sa likod ninyong lahat. At kung sa anuman pong paraan uh, kami makatutulong, uh, maski na sa ibang ahensya, ang Landbank ay partner namin. Napakalaki ng, uh, ng deposito ng, ng FADCOR sa Landbank. Uh, yan ay <laughs> uh, sa DBP, gayon din. Uh, dahil nagkataon naman, uh, uh, nakiusap sa akin si Pangulong Mike Desus at si Chairman Tinga, ay eh, medyo binabalansi ko na ngayon ang uh, pakikipag-ugnayan uh, between Land Bank at saka uh, DBP. Sa PCO, sa ano man, attorney, eh, gusto ko ipalam sa iyo na kagabi lamang ay eh, nag-usap kami ni GM uh, Mel at uh, nag-commit po ako na makakatulong niya kami at magdadagdag uh, kami ng patient transport vehicle at magdodonate kami sa inyo para mas marami pa kayong mapamigay ng mga patient transport vehicle sa iba't ibang mga uh, munisipyo at uh, siyudad o probinsya sa buong Pilipinas. Magkakaroon tayo ng MOU soon. So obviously, uh, PAGCOR uh, tries to be part of every GOCC or any agency of the government para po maparating natin ang tulong na kinakailangan ng ating mga kababayan. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakataong ipinagkalog nyo sa, sa PAN4. Doon naman sa mga nagtanong, nagtanong kanina eh, sana uh, na, naliwanagan kayo doon sa, sa aking mga kasagutan sa inyong mga katanungan at umasa kayo na kami ay hindi nagdi-delay, hindi kami nagpapahirap na maaprubahan itong mga inyong mga pangilat, sumusunod lang tayo sa proseso. Magtiwala ka sa akin, Sean, at umasa ka na sa lalong madaling panahon, mariresolba na itong CPCS issue na to sa tulong ni Chairman uh, ng GCG, Justice Quiroz, ngayon din naman kay Commissioners Mortel at Berberade. Martinez. Maraming salamat. Magandang tanghali po sa inyo. Thank you so much, Chairman Tenko. Um, Commissioner Martinez, can we hear from you before we go? Okay, thank you, Miss Ruth. And uh, sa lahat ng mga uh, nakikinig po sa atin, uh, rest assured that GCG will continue to uplift the good governance practices to international standards and that we will continue to perform our duties as a regulatory body where you can where we because we will continue to uh, advise to regulate and oversee all the GOCCs kagaya po nang lagi namin sinasabi ang mga GOCCs hindi po kami magkalaban tayo po ay nagtutulungan tayo po ay mag uh, kapamilya at uh, in any way na um, makakatulong po kami sa pangunguna rin po ng ating chairman at ni Commissioner Martel, uh, si Chairman Justice Quiroz always says our doors are always open for, every, for all the GOCCs sa paraang makakatulong po kami. Maraming salamat po, Ms. Ruth, and uh, magandang ako po sa kanila. Thank you so much, Commissioner Martinez. Commissioner Martel, thank you, Your Ruth. <clears throat> sa lahat ng mga nakikinig, maraming salamat. At sa ating apat na GOCCs dito, uh, kasama ng aming chairman, Justice Quiroz, at saka may fellow commissioner, Commissioner Berberabe, ay nagpapasalamat uh, ako, kasama nila, dito sa uh, DBP, sa pangunan ni Romy, at saka ni uh, Ted, classmate, at kay Tony Liza. Tony Liza, meron pa ako ditong 20, no? Uh, kung saan naman mapupunta itong event ko kay, kay SBPL Seed at saka kay uh, Chairman Tenko 
uh, lahat po ng GOCC, ang sabi nga po ng aming chairman, ay hindi po kami nagpapunction bilang lang pagpagbantay. Kami po ay partners din po ng GOCCs. Kaya nga po open po palagi ang aming ahensya. Hindi lamang po sa board of directors, hindi lamang po sa management, pati po sa mga empleyado ng mga GOCCs. Simula po 7.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi, bukas po ang aming ahensya. Maraming salamat po. At sana po ay hindi po itong huling um, uh, programa, Miss Ruth. Nandito yeah. lang po kami. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mortel. And of course, last but not the least, si Chairman Kios. Your final mm. words, please, before we go po. Yeah. Uh, maraming salamat, no? Sa Thank mga you, number one, sa iyo, Ma'am Ruth, sa mga GOCs na nito. At kung uh, especially to those uh, praises, Uh, and so para sa GCG. But these things could not be achieved by uh, this representation alone. Of course, I have to, to acknowledge my two commissioners who are so cooperative, Commissioner Mortel and Commissioner Gigi. Well, I also grabbed this opportunity to mention uh, Director Barsena, Director Abisado, Director uh, JP, Director uh, Mike Pabellinas, Director Karen, and uh, co- uh, with regards to our finance, uh, Mr. Raul, and then uh, uh, Ma'am Marcy, uh, Ma'am Ina. These are the people behind it. But uh, w- the most energetic lawyer here is uh, Attorney Rafaela. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Aim great. Let's serve the people, Filipino people, well. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman Quiroz. Uh, audience, please stay behind. Ha? Meron, alam mo na kung anong mangyayari later. I will just say uh, goodbye to our speakers. Thank you so much, speakers. Thank you so much for uh, joining our It's webinar so this morning. Uh, thank you so much, Paul. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Oh, Jen, ito na, ito na. Meron akong konting giveaway for all of you. I'll be giving away three sets of uh, 2,000 pesos worth of cheesies from Winford Hotel. Yeah. So ano ba ang aking tanong? I've been thinking of a question. Sige, kung anong pwede itanong. So... GCG. G, the first G is governance. C is commission. What does the other G stand for? Okay. Please type in your answer with the hashtag uh, GCG at PG. So, yan ang hashtag natin, ha? Hashtag GCG at PG. And your answer, please. So we'll we'll wait for your answers, and we will make sure that we will get in touch with you, so that you'll be able to claim your prize. Meron po ako nakita ng comment po kanina. We will attend to that, sir. Pasensya nung po kayo kung hindi pa po nakarating yung prize po sa inyo. Um, I just. Yan. So, let's ano, alam niyo na po kung ano yung answer. Madali lang po yung tanong natin. What is the second G of GCG? Kahit yung initials lang, you don't have to spell it out po. Para mas madali po sa inyo. And uh, apologies to, I'll just look for that. Uh, yung sumali po last time. We will make sure that you get get hold of your prize. Okay, let's gather more entries. We have th- we'll be giving away three sets of 2000 pesos worth of gift certificates from Winford Hotel. Okay, and uh, just watch out na lang po for our next webinar. We're still working on it. 
and hopefully it will be as exciting as as this was okay okay mr aladin e gonzagas i understand according to our staff we weren't able to contact you po eh so how can we contact you we'll try to get in touch with you na lang again sir mr aladin e gonzaga can you send a private message po to me if you can look for my facebook page para i'll be the one na lang po to ano to help you with your price and i apologize for the delay Mr. Aladdin E. Gonzaga, if you're still out there, please send me a personal message and I will attend to this person at least. Thank you. Okay, have we gathered enough na? Let's do our draw. Kaya na. Kaya na, Ed. O, kung meron daw po tayong extra 20 pesos, tumaya daw po tayo sa loto. Okay, I think pwede na tayo mag-draw. Okay, Sir Aladdin ha, if you can get my message, try please send me a private message so that I can... I will personally look into the surprise. Okay, I think pwede na. Marami na yata pumasok. Ha? Huh? <laughs> Konti pa rin. Okay, let's keep doing this. Sorry po ha, we cannot do this during the ano, webinar eh. Because we'll be flooded. Okay na, okay. So we can start drawing our three winners. Okay, let's have it. Again, we'll be giving away three 2,000 pesos worth of uh, gift certificates from Winford Hotel. Okay, and the answer is Governance Commission for GOC. Okay, and our first winner is Okay, congratulations Bev de la Cruz. Congratulations for Please wait for one of our colleagues to get in touch with you. Our second winner is And winner is Coop mm -hmm, Al. <laughs> Congratulations, Coop Al. <laughs> Kailang magdahandas na po dito sa pagpronounce ng name mo. Okay, and our third winner is Congratulations to Graciela Barcelo Diaz. Congratulations, Graciela. And please uh, wait for one of our colleagues to get in touch with you regarding the, regarding your prize. Again, once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope you were able to learn a lot about GCG. And we hope to see you again soon for our next webinar. Goodbye, everyone.